In this video, if you are a user of the NUX MG30, this unit right here, we're gonna walk through a simple way to create a blank template for your patches. This will allow you to kind of start from a, a completely blank slate. Uh, you know, I found it quite annoying on the MG30, even on the Quick Tone editor, there's no way to just hit one button and kind of clear everything out and start from a completely blank slate. So I wanted to help fellow users of the MG30 out. This video will also be helpful. Let's say you, you don't want to start from a completely blank slate, but you could follow the steps and you could create a patch that allows you to have certain parameters and effects on all the time rather than recreating that every time. And I'm also going to make the completely blank patch uh, available as a free download for you. Let's say you just want to save some time here. You want to download that and just import it right into your unit. Look for that link in the description below. Before we dive in, I do want to say this channel, Influential Worship, is primarily, gear primarily geared towards worship leaders and their teams. Uh, I recognize that with the MG30, there might be people stumbling on this video from different contexts. But if you are a worship leader or you're on a worship team, please consider subscribing to this channel. There's tons of helpful content and would love to have you be a part of this community. Also, before we dive in, if you head over to InfluentialWorship.com, I've put together a free guide that is six practices you can implement this week that'll help you out in your confidence in your worship leading and not an arrogant uh, confidence in our own abilities, but a godly confidence. So we'd love to get that into your hands. Head over in to uh, influentialworship.com, put in your email, and that'll come to you completely free. With that, let's dive into the tutorial. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to show you some views here. This is my screen as I'm looking at it right now. And this is the quick tone editor right here. Uh, over here, this is the master list of patches. And the reason I'm showing you this screen, this right here, by the way, too, is just Studio One. This is kind of like a default screen I have set up when I'm working with the MG30. Uh, I'm not, this is not a sounds video, so you're, you're not, you know, not, nothing's going to be running through this Studio One right now. Uh, but there's no effects or anything on here. This is just um, the MG30 routing through the, my DAW, Studio One, so that I can get a stereo uh, stereo signal of the MG30 on these streams. Uh, but the reason I wanted to show you this here is in the main view we're going to use, which is going to look like this, you'll notice I've right here, you'll notice I've cut off that master list of patches. And that's just to kind of have the real estate look this way and, and lay this out the best way for you, the viewer. So I just wanted you to, uh, you to see that. If you might be wondering, like, man, I'm not seeing that that uh, master list of patches. Just wanted to show you that there and kind of show you what's going on. So this is where we're going to be spending most of our time in this view. And then I will occasionally hop over to the, the full screen view of the unit like this as well. But with that, let's dive in. You'll see here that I've... Uh, done this a couple times just to kind of get familiar with the process myself, work out any kinks and bugs, and, and have this be a helpful video for you. So what I'm going to do here is uh, jump over here to this default patch that comes with the unit. Uh, aside from these blank patches here that you'll see, everything else is the factory reset of the unit. So this slot here, what are we at? Five here, um, Pete's T80s Clean is one of the default patches that comes with the unit. So we're gonna assume that we don't have these right here, these blank patches that were created. And we're just gonna start with slot five here. And I'm gonna show you what to do step by step. I'm gonna show you how I got to these blank patches here. So with that, first thing we're gonna do is you can see here's the, the name right here, Pete T80s Clean. And uh, I'm gonna click up here. I'm gonna type in blank patch. You can do whatever you want. Um, you know, some people might like to do um, kind of the, the little uh, dashes like that. You can do whatever you want. Uh, for the sake of this, let's say, let's go, uh, let's go one, two, three, four dashes, blank patch, and then another four dashes, one, two, three, four. Alrighty, I'm gonna hit enter. Now you'll notice that it's changed here, but if I hop over to this display real quick, um, you'll notice that it hasn't changed here in the master list. Now this is very important. You're gonna wanna do this right away. You're gonna wanna hit save, and then what'll happen is now you'll notice um, if we go to slot five, you'll see there that it actually did change the name of the patch. It looks like it, it kind of cut off uh, some of those dashes. That, that must be kind of a limitation maybe on the name. Um, so again, if you wanted to, you could just go, um, let's edit this again. Let's maybe just go to, this is my OCD maybe kicking in here. Uh, hey, fellow OCD, um, you, you know, OCD uh, users of the MG30 type in the comments if this that type of stuff bugs you. But let's go here. You'll see we updated there as soon as I hit save. 
There we go. So now it's reflected in the master list. We've got blank patch. And uh, that's just very important. Let me hop back over to this screen. It's very important right away to hit save because otherwise, if you by mistake kind of navigate over to another patch, you will lose everything you've done. So uh, I've learned that by experience. So just make sure you save right away. You're going to want to save quite a bit as you go through this process. So with that, what you're going to do now is you're going to go through all of these. Um, you're going to go through all of these uh, these effects blocks here, and you're going to go one by one. You're going to right click, and then you're going to see bypass. So let me start with this one here, the compressor. Now, what you saw there, the wah. For some reason, the wah does not have bypass as an option. So let's say by mistake you you've engaged this here, and now we've got that wah engaged. But we let's say you don't want that in your your default patch. If I hop over here, you'll see when this global light lights up green, that means the wah is engaged. Now, what you're going to have to do to disengage it, there's a couple couple, um, couple things you can do, um, but the, the easiest way is to just use the uh, pressure of the expression pedal to disengage that wah, and you'll see it's reflected on the Quicktone editor. Now, if you do that with your unit, it's brand new, you've just got it out of the box, and you're trying to press down and that doesn't work, uh, that is because you haven't actually calibrated or set up your expression pedal. I talked about this in a full walkthrough video I did. So real quickly, um, just to, to get to that process, what you're going to do is hold down global. And then let me do this. I'm going to switch to this view so you can see this a little closer. All I did was hold down on the global home button. That got me into the global settings. You're going to use this to navigate over to expression setup. I'm going to press in the joystick. And then now you'll see there's directions. It says there, um, pre press control to calibration. That's push pushing this foot switch. And I'm not going to do this because I've already set it up, so I don't want to recalibrate it, but it'll walk you step by step through what to do. And that the last step of that is actually getting that pressure um, down on the expression pedal, which will then let you um, use that as a way to engage and disengage the wall. So with that, let me get back here to where we were. And so again, I'm primarily now working in this quick tone editor. So Again, all I'm doing is just dis, uh, disengaging all these blocks, going bypass, bypass, just doing this to all of them. You might be wondering why I'm bypassing ones that are not engaged, like some that are already you know, not illuminated. Uh, again, it's just a practice here. I'm going like, I want to start from a completely blank slate. And, and so I'm just going to disengage everything. Now the volume, you could choose to disengage this or not. Chances are you're always going to be using patch level, right? You're going to need some kind of volume to actually have the patches be helpful. So the one that I'm not going to disengage is the volume block here. And now if I go back over to the unit here, what you can see, if I flip over to this real quick, you'll see nothing is illuminated, nothing is on, nothing's engaged in terms of the effects blocks except for that volume block that we left on. So that's what, that's what we want to see there. None of these are lit up except for that volume that volume block and jump back over here. So now you've got everything's set up really well there, but now you got to keep in mind up here, you'll notice there's scene one, scene two, and scene three. You've got to do this for all of your scenes. Even if you don't anticipate using them, uh, it's just a good practice to, to get into the habit. If you're creating a completely blank patch, you're going to want to disengage all of these. So again, bypass, all I'm doing is right clicking, hitting bypass. There we go, bypass. Again, I'm gonna leave the volume on. I'm gonna do this for scene three as well. Bypass, bypass. Again, you're just bypassing everything. And now a note, again, if let's say you are wanting to create a patch where maybe you like some of the signal chain and you, you wanna keep some of these on. Again, that's up to you. I'm just showing you completely blank patch, but let's say you always want an EQ right here uh, or wherever you want that in the signal chain. Um, you you know you can move things around at this point. You could go okay. I always want the the EQ right at the front or wherever you want it. I always want a gate right at the front, and I always want that on. Or I always want my EQ a certain way. Again, you could set up this patch as a default for your context and your liking, uh, whatever fits your playing needs. So I'm just showing you uh, again how to do this as a completely blank patch. So now let's just do a double check. We've got scene three, two, and one all set up the same way. And again, just to, even a note there. Let's say you always want um, scene two and three to kind of be set up as a certain way. You can even do that in your default patch. Again, set it up to whatever fits your context. Now we've got all those blank. Now, one thing we're going to want to do, I'm not going to worry about drum and loop. I, I'm just assuming at this point, we're not using that for, 
uh, mainly for that that's uh th that feature of the mg30 we're using this primarily for patches and sounds one thing we are going to do though is look at like how you want to set these up again i'm going for a blank slate so what i'm going to do here is again right click or in this case just click and i'm going to choose again everything kind of just completely zeroed out on this and now you don't have to do this for each scene this is kind of global for the patch so you'll see that there uh, that's just global for all of those. And I'm just showing you this here that that did that the same way. So you'll see that there. Um, again, same thing here on settings. Uh, I'm not going to adjust anything here on settings. I don't believe these even save uh, in terms of saving per the patch. But again, I'm not going to touch anything on the settings there, the USB recording settings and, and things like that and MIDI. Uh, again, I, I'm not super familiar with the MIDI functionality. And so again, I'm, I'm not quite sure if you do custom MIDI here, if that saves per patch or not, we'll have to explore that in another video. Uh, but again, just showing you what I'm, what I'm adjusting here. So now at this point, we've got everything zeroed out. I'm gonna hit save one more time. I'm gonna hit save as, or save. You could do save as if you wanna change the name. And then what I'm gonna do is export this. So uh, what I'm gonna do is choose the one here. You can choose whatever, you can choose a number of patches to export. This is the one we've been working with on slot five. The two dash ends a blank patch. So I'm gonna highlight it there. It's gonna turn yellow like that. And then I'm gonna hit this little button right here. And it's gonna bring up here, you'll see, let me bring this into view for you. It's gonna bring up your, uh, again, wherever you typically download things, it's gonna bring up your browser. This might look different on a Windows. I am on a Mac. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose a location to save this. Now, what I would suggest is on the desktop here, I've created a folder uh, called MG30 patches. I would suggest you do something like that just to keep your patches organized. So if you choose that, choose that folder. And again, let me show you this in view here. I'm just going, following along my normal computing, um, just kind of way to navigate your computer. And then it's gonna see real quick there, export to computer, it's gonna say finish, you go okay. And then now you've got a blank patch. So again, this is what I'll make available in the description below as a downloadable link. And if you do download that, or even for yourself, now you wanna use that as a way to just kind of clear out a, a default preset. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So you're gonna just simply go import right here. You're gonna click import. You're gonna to navigate to where that patch was. So in this case, I went MG30 patches. You'll see that here's the name of it. Two dashes, blank patch, two dashes. This is what the files are gonna look like. It's gonna say .mg30 patch. And I'm just gonna simply click open. Let me navigate to where you can see that. Click open. Now it's gonna bring up this, um, again, this list of, of all the different slots. And I'm just gonna simply choose where I wanna import that to. So I'm gonna go to the next slot, slot six there. I'm gonna overwrite PT Plexi lead. Again, that's just the default patch. I'm gonna hit import down here. So again, I know that's a little bit cut off for you. Let me go move that up a little bit. Hit import there. It's gonna say preset loaded successfully. And then that is it, you're done. And uh, you've, you've downloaded that successfully. So what I'm gonna do now is walk through how to do this on the actual unit itself. Again, I'm gonna strongly caution you, if you have access to Quick to Quicktone, the Quicktone editor, highly suggest that you use the Quicktone editor. Um, I'll put a link in the description below as well, by the way, if you're not familiar with that, I'll put a link to where to download that uh, from the NewX website. But just for some reason, if it's not working, you're not by your computer, you're at the gig, you don't have access to your computer, you wanna just kinda, set up a default template, let's say something happens and you're, you're just, you have the unit itself and that's all you have. Let's walk through how to do this on the unit. So what I'm gonna do for this is, um, I'm gonna switch back and forth between this view and this view. I kinda wanna show you how things are just real time with the, uh, with the Quicktone editor open as well. But with that, let's first start on this view here. And what I'm gonna do is just navigate over to a new patch. So I'm gonna use the rotary dial here um, you can see now we've got, you know, if I pull up, this pulls up that master list. We've got now six slots full of these blank patches as I've been showing you this. And, and again, just walking through things for myself, but we're going to navigate over to the next one down. So now we got PT raw. We're going to hit that. So let me go back to that here. Now you can see it's loaded up that patch and you'll see it's real time with the Quicktone editor, which again, this is why I love having this open. If you are doing a lot of editing, would highly suggest having the Quicktone editor open, even if you are working with the unit itself. So first thing you're gonna, you're gonna wanna do is very important, you're gonna wanna hit save, 
and then it's going to bring up the uh, the naming conventions here. It's a little bit annoying. Again, not as easy as just typing in on the uh, the quick tone, but some little hacks is if you push these buttons in, what it's going to do is it's going to it's going to bring your um, you know these correspond the four dials here now correspond to these four um, these four letter or number slots on the name right there. And so if you push them in, what it's going to do is it's going to navigate you here to blank uh, the numbers or the symbols, the numbers, the capital letters, and then the lowercase letters. And so if you just hit them a few times, rather than like using the dial like this, for example, to try to like rotate, you'll see here the little red box is moving. Rather than rotating all the way back there, which can be a little bit time consuming and cumbersome, if you just simply push a few times, it's gonna navigate you right back to that blank box. So you can see there, uh, now we've got the first four characters clear, or first four spaces clear. I'm gonna use the joystick thing here to go over to the right. It's gonna give us the next four little uh, slots there for having either a, a letter or a number or a symbol. And then I'm simply gonna do the same thing there. That one was already at blank, so do that there. I'm gonna get them completely blank, then I'm gonna navigate back over to the start. And then you can kind of use that, that trick again and just go, okay, I want a capital B. So I'm gonna navigate to the capital letters, go one over, there we go. And then I'm gonna get to my lowercase letters. Now I'm gonna navigate over to the L, there we go. And obviously you can, you can name, um, you know, you can choose here if you want to shorten things, um, you could choose whatever name you want for your default patch. It might be simpler. Some people might be going, okay, it might be simpler for me to just go, if it's blank, again, you could navigate over to um, here, for example, if I navigate over to the little dash right there, maybe you just want to go, you know, dash, dash, dash. Again, whatever you want to do, I'm just going to stick with what we've started here and I'm going to go blank. There we go, whoops. There we go, blank. And this is why you could see the kind of the cumbersomeness of this here. This is why I would highly recommend not doing this on the unit itself. But hey, that's what we're working with right now. Now we get over to the blank, and then there we go. I'm just gonna go blank for the sake of this. Now, again, very important, hit save. If you navigate over, by even by mistake, if I twist this dial and navigate over to another patch, You've, you're gonna have lost all that work and that time. So just make sure you hit save. And then now you can see this, this uh, name at least has changed to what we set it for, blank. But you can see we've still got the default blocks engaged. So the easiest way to kind of disengage these is to push down on the, the uh, joystick here and that's gonna get us into editing mode as you can see here. And then if you use the joystick, you'll notice here there's this little green uh, this little green icon. Now, if I switch back over here, and I just want to show you the the real time nature of the quick tone editor. As I'm pushing that joystick here to the left, pushing it to the left and to the right, you'll see how real time it changes in the quick tone editor. So super, super handy. Um, and what you'll see here again is now if we go, um, if we push this in, it's going to actually disengage that block. And you'll see if I do that again, if I re-engage it, you'll see it, you can see it uh, kind of highlighting and unhighlighting in the quick tone editor here. And that's the bypass mode, right? So that's again, on and off. Again, you can even see the visual elements of the actual pedal here um, happening there. So again, red, you can see it's on. Then now it's bypassed, it's disengaged. And again, I love just the visual nature of the quick tone editor. So that's why I wanted to show you that. Let me switch back over to this view. Um, let's, we're going to continue to disengage all these blocks. Now, a little bit of a trick on the IR is you might, you're going to, you'll notice there, if you push the IR, what's going to happen? It's going dis, to disengage the amp right now, but you'll see your IR is still active. So you might be wondering, well, I'm pushing that and I'm, it's not disengaging. What you have to do with the IR is just navigate all the way over. So, because what that's doing is cycling through all the different IRs that are on board and available. And you have to just get over to the user collection here, find a blank slot or leave a blank slot if you have some already loaded, and then you have to push in, then push your back button, your global button, and now you'll notice there's no, um, there's no IR block lit up because it's a blank IR. So again, that's the way to disengage that. So I'm gonna enter edit mode again, get that little green arrow there. I'm gonna disengage everything except for uh, the volume block, same thing. We're gonna leave that, because again, chances are you're gonna always need that. So I'm gonna leave that volume block engaged. 
Now, you'll notice and remember from doing this on the quick tone editor that um, you'll, you'll remember that there's these scenes here, right? Scene one, scene two, and scene three. And you'll notice on the unit itself, they're right here. If I go here, you'll notice there's S1, S2, and S3. But now you might be wondering like, how do I get to that on the actual unit? I've kind of like scaled the, obviously the manual and just tried different things. I'm like, man, there's no way to use these dials to get to that, at least to my knowledge. If you know of a way, please drop that in the comments, help us all out. But what you're gonna need to do is actually hold down and you're gonna need to assign one of these foot switches. So that either the NMP2 or this control foot switch, you're gonna need to assign to be able to change scenes if you wanna kind of clear out all the scenes. So what I'm gonna do here is um, use the dial four to just get that over to scenes. And then you're gonna to wanna to press in. This is what you want. You want it to say S3 on. If it says S3 off, that is actually disengaged that scene. So maybe that's what you want as well. Maybe you don't want the ability to even go to scene three. Uh, I'm gonna just, again, try to get to that blank slate for all the different scenes. So I'm gonna leave that on. Um, you're gonna hit you're gonna hit out of that. Now this, you'll see now the control pedal switch from being a tap tempo default, which is what it is for most of the default patches. It's switched to being the control for scenes. So what you're gonna see now is I push this foot switch, it's gonna switch the scenes here. And you'll see there, now it's switching between scene one, which we've, we've blanked out, scene two and scene three. And then let me just show you this. Again, the quick tone editor, you will see it switching right up here with that foot switch. Then just real like, real-time connection with the quick tone editor. Real handy. So what we're gonna do, get over to scene two, push in to get into edit mode. I'm gonna do this a little bit quicker this time. Navigate over, navigate over to the different blocks, push in. In the IR, remember you have to navigate over to this, find a blank one, push in, and then get out of that. Then you're gonna have to get into edit mode again to get that, whoops, there we go, to get that, uh, now just re-engage it. So what I'm gonna do is, uh, get over to the uh, the IR. Let's just navigate over to something. There we go. So now I'm going to get into edit mode again. Get over to this EQ, disengage that. There we go. So now we've got a blank slate for scene two. Now I want to say this at this point. Let's say, uh, let me get back into this. Let's say um, you want to rearrange the blocks a certain way. And um, I, you know, I didn't show you this going through the quick tone as well. Obviously, the quick tone it's super easy. You just click and, and drag. You can drag this stuff to wherever you want it. The amp and I R block are obviously always together, um, but you can rearrange the order. But on the unit itself, I did talk about this in the the, the walkthrough. But the unit itself, you you would hold up, and you'll actually get into your signal chain. And then again, you can you can choose to rearrange the order. If you choose one of the common ones here. Um, it's as simple as then move, using the joystick, uh, not the rotary dial, but using the joystick to go left and right. And you'll see that it changes the order of that there. So if, again, if you're making a, a template that is not necessarily blank, but you always want things a certain way or a certain order for your signal chain, that's a way to do that. Uh, so with that, let's do the last scene here. Again, enter edit mode, press in. Again, your IR is gonna, you're gonna need to just navigate over to a blank one, press in, use the home global button as a back button. I'm gonna enter edit mode again, get that little green triangle bar thing right there, or triangle cursor, I should say, not bar. And then, boom, we're gonna get to that there. So now we've got everything blank. And again, don't forget at this point to hit save. Uh, oh, and by the way, before we hit save, let's just hit save anyway good practice to just get into the habit of that. But now we wanna make sure we edit the, the uh, different foot switch assignments as well. So to do that, all I'm doing is holding down there on the joystick, you get, you get into this mode, and then you're gonna use these dials to get over to the, the, blank, the blank ones there. So find the blank ones for all these. Obviously your number three is that I have the NMP2 connected right now, it actually tells you that here. So it's a tip ring setup. So we've got tip there, and then you actually have to press in on three to get to the ring and do that there. And then scene, the scene, um, in this case, I'm just gonna go ahead and actually leave scene on because again, you're gonna wanna have a way if you're using the scenes to be able to navigate that. So I'm gonna just assume for this, this blank patch, let's just assume we want that on all the time and that's how we want things set up. I'm gonna hit save again. And then now we've got this blank patch set up. 
and you'll see if I navigate the scenes, everything's cleared out. If I hold down again here, you can see that saved. And so there we go. We've got a blank patch set up for that. Friends, if you have uh, just stumbled upon this video and you were wondering, my, how do I create that blank patch? I hope this has been helpful. Even how do I create different um, patches and kind of a, a, have a default starting place? I hope this has been helpful to you. It's something that I was wondering for a while. I'm like, man, surely there's gotta be a button that you can just push and it clears everything out. But again, found it, didn't find that. And so I wanted to create this resource to help out fellow users of the MG30. If you stuck with, we, stuck with me this far, and again, if you are a worship leader, please head over to Influential Worship worship.com would love to get that free guide into your hands and with that i will see you in the next video god bless you